Good morning. We welcome you to be with us this morning. Thank you so much for uh, checking in uh, to our Facebook page and uh, joining us uh, in, in worship this morning. Uh, it's a challenge sometimes these times, but uh, we are just so encouraged by the Lord, by his word, by his spirit within us uh, to give us courage and uh, in, in a time when we just really don't know what's going to happen next, things change every day, but we just trust in him. And so we're, we're so glad you're with us uh, this morning. We really want to know that you're here. It, it just encourages one another, encourages us. Uh, later we go back and look at your comments, and that's an encouragement. And so if you can uh, make sure that you let us know you're here, and maybe on a holiday weekend, as it's a holiday weekend, uh, you can let us know who's with you if you have anyone extra with you in your home, family, etc. And uh, share scriptures that mean uh, something to you this morning, uh, some memories, etc. And so we just really appreciate your comments. That means so much. This morning, before we begin, uh, I'd like us to take some moments of silent prayer where we're at and pray for a few needs that are definitely before us. Of course, uh, the one is our, our government and our leaders, and we're um, challenged in Scripture to always pray for our leaders, those who govern us. So please take a moment to pray for our leaders. Uh, next, of course, uh, in our state, uh, Midland has had their terrible, terrible flood, flooding crisis, and so many people are displaced and hurting and um, afraid and fearful and without the things that they need. So pray, let's pray for Midland uh, with the flooding uh, issues. And then, of course, this weekend is Memorial Day weekend, and we want to take a moment to remember those who've uh, given their lives uh, for our country um, and those who have just passed on from our families and, and who we memorialize uh, this weekend and today. So take a moment and thank God for those sacrifices as well. And then we just don't want to forget Jesus, giving his, his ultimate sacrifice of his life uh, for us. And so we, we remember him today, not just at the time of communion, but all of the time as we extol the Lord's name uh, together. And remember the scripture, greater love has no man than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. And that's what Jesus did for us. So we're here today to praise and, and honor him. So as we take some moments for silent prayer, please remember to pray for our leaders and our church leaders as well, for Midland, um, for those who've given their lives uh, for us in this country, and thank, thank the Lord for Jesus in giving his life. So let's just take some quiet moments together. Thank you, Father, for prayer that we can bring our hearts to you. And Father, this morning, we lift up our hearts to you in praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. God be all else to me, save that thou art. Not thy best thought by day or by night. Waking or sleeping, thy presence my life. Be thou my wisdom, be thou my truth. 
couple moments now and show you a video of um, some of our graduates, our high school graduates here from DuPlain. So we want to really celebrate them and, and show extra love and uh, attention and celebration of them. So here's just a little bit of background on them. Two thousand twenty grads, uh, there aren't words to tell you how much you mean to us, and we are grateful for the opportunity that we've had to be a part of your life. Uh, the retreats, uh, the group meetings, all the things that that we were able to do and to share uh, in in your life were, were equally a blessing to us. And so, the sponsor team and, and myself, we are we are grateful uh, for you, and we are excited for your future. Uh, as we uh, uh, move forward, before I pray for you, I want to share a, a, a message, a thought that I, I got from a friend's sermon uh, a, a week or so ago. Uh, in this sermon, uh, my friend reminded me that, that God is more concerned with our character than he is with our comfort. I, I can't think of a message that is more vivid over the last year than that one. God is more concerned with our character than our comfort. I have no doubt that God has plans for you and that, that he is going to, to help you realize your dreams. But I want you to understand that it's not about what we want. It's about our character and who we choose to be. And so I want to encourage you to follow God faithfully and allow him to develop your character. And so that you aren't the, uh, just the best version of yourself that you can imagine. But you'll be the best version of yourself that God can create. God desires to use you and to bless you. All you need to do is to follow him step by step. With that, let's pray. Dear Lord, we come before you and I just thank you for each of these grads. Lord, I pray that you would bless their future. Lord, I pray that you would give them wisdom, that they would understand and recognize your voice, and Lord, that they would follow it day in and day out. Lord, give them the courage to stand up to temptation. Give them the, the fortitude and, and to be different when necessary. But Lord, most of all, we just pray for clarity, that they would understand the path that you have them on and that they would walk it faithfully. And Lord, we pray for your blessing. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We love you. Take care. 
I'd like us uh, to share in a scripture together this morning, and it, it reminds us of our eternal God, how great he is, and all the deeds that he has done and the works that he has done in the past, and what he continues to do. We can always count on him. So let's read from Psalm 111 together. Praise, Praise the, the Lord. Lord. I, I will extol, extol the Lord with all my heart. heart in the, the council of, of the upright and in, in the assembly. Great, Great are the works of the Lord. They are, they are pondered by all who delight in them. Glorious and majestic are his deeds, and his righteousness endures forever. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and all who follow his precepts have good understanding. To him belongs eternal praise. As we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever, our hope, our strong delay.
in Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless faith, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on that cross the sinless died, the wrath of God was satisfied for every sin on him was laid here in the death of Christ I live there in the ground his body the world by darkness slain and bursting forth in glorious day up from the grave he rose again and as he stands in victory since curse has lost its grip on me for I am his and he with the precious blood of Christ. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. No guilt in life, no fear in death, this is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand. Till he returns or calls me home, here in the power of Christ I'll stand. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground. Good morning. Uh, it's been a while since I've been here, and uh, though I've, like you, I've been viewing this, but uh, but actually being here, this was my first time uh, coming to the church uh, since this all started. So it's great to be here, at least to be here. Um, you know, Jesus taught in many, using many uh, parables and different teachings, different styles of of getting his point across. And one of those things I wanted to talk to you about uh, as I encourage you today, and uh, that would be in uh, the account of John's Gospel in chapter 20. I'll first start out with a question to you. Uh, and this may sound like an Easter type of a thing because of the resurrection of Jesus, but... Uh, but this is pertinent to us uh, nonetheless. Why did Jesus fold the burial cloth after his resurrection? And so we can find the answer to that uh, and read that for ourselves in John 20, uh, verse 7. And I want to read that specific thing to you. But before we do that, let's get the, let's get the gist of what's going on here. So let's read from 1, uh, 21 to 7. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciples, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. 
He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate uh, from the linen. So did you get that part? It was folded up. Now, I looked into uh, the account of uh, a King James version of the Bible, and uh, it reads that the, the head wrapping or the cloth uh, that was folded up used the word napkin. It was a napkin. And it also uses the language that distinguishes the two materials. One was a linen cloth and the other being a napkin. So is this significant? Well, let's just listen to what uh, Reverend Tim McConnell has to say. He's the fellow that done the research into this. And he says that to understand the significance of the folded napkin, we need to understand a little bit about Hebrew tradition of that day. The folding of a napkin had to do with the communication between a master and his servant. If you were a Jewish boy servant, this language, without speaking, was traditional or customary during the time period of Jesus, that Jesus was walking the earth. When the servant set the table for the master, he made sure that it was exactly the way the master wanted it. The table being furnished perfectly, the servant would wait, just out of sight, until the master had finished eating. The servant would not dare touch the table until the master was finished. Now, if the master was finished eating, he would rise up from the table, wipe his fingers, mouth, and beard, wad up the napkin, and throw it on the table. The servant would then know that this meant it's time to clear the table. For in those days, the wadded up napkin meant, I'm finished. But if the master got up from the table, folded his napkin, and laid it beside his plate, the servant would not dare touch the table because the folded napkin meant, I'm coming back. He's coming back. He's not finished. This made the hair on the back of my neck stand up. I've got more hair on the back of my neck than I do on top of my head. So, uh, listen, while you may or may not be skeptical uh, of Mr. McConnell's research, we do know that he is coming back. In Acts chapter 1, 9 through 11, says this. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. So these are just words of encouragement. I wanted to, I thought this was very interesting. And, um, and so until then, until then, let's make sure that we're ready to, and let your, make sure that we've got oil in our lamps and we're ready when he comes. So will you pray with me? Father, we thank you for this day today. We thank you for this lesson and, and the different ways that you speak to us. You've been so good to us and so patient with us. We want to take time, just a brief moment of time, to memorialize you and to remember uh, your demonstration of love for us. And as we commune together and apart, but with all with one mind and one heart, we do this to remember you. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.
I'm going to start this over. <laughs> Someone has said, God is perfect, has perfect timing. Never early and never late. Uh, it, it takes a little patience and it takes a, a lot of faith, but it's worth waiting for. And it's also been said, two things define you, your patience when you have nothing and your attitude when you have everything. And so how patient are you? On a scale of 1 to 10, where are you? And, and before you answer that, before you answer that uh, on, your, on our Facebook chat space, let me ask a, maybe an even more simpler question. Could you use a little bit more patience right now? I mean, think about that um, uh, these days. Is, is COVID-19 getting, uh, getting to you these days? Um, uh, Phil's comment this week on our update was talking about being patient uh, through all of this. And, and it's really starting to add up and how patient we need to be with, with everything that's going on. And so do you find yourself losing your patience uh, a little more these days? And would you like to have more willpower in, in this area? Now, feel free to answer that question right there. Would you just like to have more patience? And uh, put that on our chat space. You know, you don't have to give us a commentary or anything like that. Uh, just a yes or no. And, and I'm thinking this is one that's going to be unanimous. That uh, we do. We need more patience. We're, we're in a five-part series this morning uh, called On Display. And uh, we're, looking at the five diff we're looking at five different virtues of the fruit of the Spirit that are found in Galatians 5, 22 and 23. As Christians, these qualities ought to be modeled by us uh, until Jesus comes back again as they display the, the Spirit of God that lives in us. Now last week, we, we started with the, the fruit of peace and how we are to display peace in our relationships with other people by seeing its value and and we talked about how to keep peace and, and how to restore it. Today, we're, we're going to look at the fourth of the list of nine uh, in the list in uh, uh, Galatians chapter 5 uh, that we're going to look at today is patience. And so let's just go ahead and uh, look at all nine of them for just a second here. Uh, we'll read the passage, uh, Galatians 5, 22 and 23. And I want to, in the worst way, to say, you know, I wish we could, we could precede uh, these verses by saying uh, the display of the Spirit. Uh, uh, here, here's what, they, uh, what we ought to be displaying. But the fruit of the Spirit, the display of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience. Some of you have forbearance maybe in your Bibles. Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and, and self-control against such things there is no law. So, uh, in our struggle, in our struggle with patience, many of us are like the person that prayed, Lord, give me, give me patience, and I want it now. And, and look, at, look at this verse in Proverbs 16, 32. Better to be patient than powerful. Better to have self-control than to conquer a city. And, and then the word, the word for patience really gets to the bottom of the, uh, the definition of patience. Uh, patience uh, a word this word picture that I want to give to you and here's what the Bible says patience is the original is the original word is a two-part word called macrothumia macrothumia macro means long or large as opposed to micro meaning small or short and thumia means anger agitation uh, irritation and so you put those two together, and guess what? It's a great definition of what patience is. Patience is the prolonged restraint of justified agitation. And, and you know what? Even that sounds painful, doesn't it? In, in other words, I am going to hold back my anger for an extended period of time. So let's put that understanding of patience into real life, a real-life setting. You know, just think about this. Your waitress, your waitress at the restaurant someday in the future or maybe in the past, your waitress messed up your order for the third time 
or your child refuses to clean their room all summer long, or your boss, you know, he's always on your case, or someone eats your favorite donut that you've been saving for tomorrow's breakfast. The human nature in all of us eventually, you know what, it crosses a line and we say something or we do something that displays our frustration or our irritation or our agitation. So, how do you, pre- how do you prevent all that? Patience. That's holding back your frustration and you endure over a long period of time. And as I studied through this particular virtue of the Spirit, I I came to realize that Jesus told a story about it one time. It it might be familiar to some of you. I I just want to read uh, the story for you uh, from the Bible. And I'll put up on the screen a couple verses that talk about patience that I I want to highlight. And so I'm going to be reading from Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 through 35. So if you want to follow along i'll give you a second there matthew 18 21 through 35 and we're going to have it on the screen here too when peter came to jesus and asked him lord how many times shall i forgive my brother uh, when he sins against me up to seven times jesus answered i tell you not seven times but 77 times therefore the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And as he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. The servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. And when that servant went out and he found one of his fellow servants who owed him just a hundred denarii, uh, he grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. This, his fellow servant fell on his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay you back. And then, but he refused. Instead, he went off and he had the man thrown in prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called, in, called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master turned him over to the jailers until he paid him all he owed. This is how your heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother and sister from your heart. And so we have a a couple situations here. The first is a master has loaned money to uh, to a servant and it's time to get his money back. And the second is the servant has loaned money to a fellow servant and it's time to get his money back. And in both cases, the debtor is unable to pay, and the loaner is getting agitated about it. He's getting irritated. In fact, maybe angry about, uh, and about to lose his patience. And so instead of losing it, Jesus told a story of how they could be patient instead. Now, my study of this story on patience, I uncovered a couple strategies that could really that could really help build our patience level. And I'd like to share those with you this morning. Let me illustrate this by something that happened to me a number of years ago, uh, and then I'll show you uh, in the story Jesus told from our text. In my previous ministry in Cass City, the the church there held uh, annual swap days, very similar to our sharing corner here at DuPlain. And, and members would bring all sorts of items, and, and uh, we would open up the doors for a couple days to the community, and they would come in and take whatever they wanted, free of charge, just like here. Well, this one year, the week uh, of the event, as they were setting up, I, uh, believe it or not, I had, been, I had been fishing this particular day, and uh, I knew Amy, my wife, was going to 
take a load of stuff uh, from the house to the giveaway. And I forgot to take my tackle box and fishing pole out of the car. And so Amy proceeded to load the car and take it to the church. And later that night around the dinner table, she said this. She said, well, Charlie, I just want to say how nice it was for you to give away your pole, your fishing pole, and your tackle box. <laughs> Free to the giveaway. Oh, I wish you could have seen my eyes <laughs> and seen my response. Uh, it really was not a major thing, but I, I had definitely uh, crossed the line and was a bit irritated. And uh, I did get it all back. That's just, I did get it all back. But I learned that day about majoring on the minors. Now let me show you the same thing in this story by Jesus. It's hard to make an exact estimate on how much money was involved in these two instances compared to today's financial economy, but from a conservative angle, the, the servant owed his master around, Jesus just really makes this wide here, a hundred million dollars. And the fellow servant owed the other servant just like, like twenty dollars, something small. Now, the obvious point that Jesus is trying to make from this contrast of value is that we have a far greater debt to God than anyone has to us. And that's the powerful point. If God overlooks my bad behavior towards him, which is at a $100 million value level, then it's hard for me to explode on you when your poor behavior to me is at a $20 level. But I think there is something else going on in this contrast of values that really uh, helps build a patience. And here it is. Learn, learn to be patient with the $20 stuff. And if you can, if you can do that, then it equips you to deal with the rare times when you are, when you are in the $100 million uh, area, dollar area. You know, if you can't restrain agitation at the $20 level, you're going to be a volcano when the $100 million stuff shows up. So major in the minors. Take care of the small stuff. Now let's, let's say that you're a dad or a mom of a 15-year-old son. And he's generally been an A or B student every year in school. And this one particular semester, he gets a C- minus in world history or American history. And, and you lose your mind. You know, you, you take privileges away from him. You, you belittle him with, with a raised voice and threats. And you make him read history books after dinner. And you, you take him off the basketball team. And so, you know what? If you're unable to restrain agitation with a C-, minus, what are you going to do when you find Xanax or, or some small doses of meth in, a, in his uh, pocket of his jeans? Now, the answer is not to ignore the C-, minus, but to address it with patience. And if you can learn how to do that consistently, then you are preparing yourself for the major crisis if they ever come. So, if, if, if you, you know, I don't think sermons are really uh, worth a nickel if they don't get down into our own personal lives and our business and ask the hard questions. So, how are you doing with the $20 instances that pop up in your life? And are you patient? Or does it well up in your attitudes and comments and anger? What gets displayed in your minor disappointments and disruptions? Learn to do well in the minors. And you'll need that training if the majors ever show up. And maybe, maybe we're there. Maybe we're there right now with the coronavirus going on around us. There's a, there's a neat communication trick that uh, is often taught in premarital counseling, and it's called the word game. 
It goes like this. If, um, if or whenever one of the couple uh, in marriage needs to talk to the other with undivided attention, they would say a code word that the two of them know. And, and say, let's just say the word is lemonade, okay? And the other person would immediately put down the cell phone, turn the television off, uh, close the laptop. Uh, the word became the pivot where everything would change. And so just imagine it's the closing seconds of an important game, a movie, and the spouse walks in and says, Lemonade! (laughs) And that word game came to mind this week when I was studying the story of Jesus about patience. There is a word used in the story that I never understood the significance of, and the root of the word is pronounced splunk. Say that. Splunk. Say that. Splunk. Yeah, I said that's what I said. Splunk. Okay? And and that's not even a word in English, but it's a very important word that Jesus used when he told stories. And the very first time that he ever used, that we see the word used, it refers to the entails of a, a, in your entrails of your body, uh, your insides, your guts. Uh, All of us have splunk. Okay? But then the word began to morph into something a little bit more, into an emotional, positive feeling that you have towards someone else. You splunk them. You, you feel in your insides a love for them. You feel in your insides the sorrow for them when they hurt. You feel in your insides the joy for them when, when they are blessed. Now, what I did not know is that when Jesus told stories, he would, from time to time, use splunk, yeah, as a turning point in the story, and everything started to go right. The world could be falling apart, and and then someone splunked their guts, and the tables turned, and everything started to get better. Do you remember the story of the Good Samaritan? The guy gets robbed and beaten and left by the side of the road to die, and all these others are, are passing him by, they walk by and they don't help the poor guy, but then the Samaritan come by, comes by, and guess what? He splunks his guts. Yeah. It, Luke 10, 33 says, But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. <laughs> he splunked his guts. That's what it's saying. The guy laying in the road was a Jew. The Samaritans and Jews did not... Uh, like each other, and so it would have been completely understandable in that culture um, to, for Samaritans to refuse and just walk on by and not help this Jew. But he didn't. He splunked his guts. And most of us remember the story of the prodigal son. The kid takes his inheritance and he blows it on wild living, and when he hits the ditch, uh, he, he wants to come back home and, and be welcomed. And his father uh, could have responded with anger, Uh, an anger attitude uh, towards the son. But look what he did in Luke chapter 15, verse 20. But while he was still a a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion towards him. He splunked his guts. Yeah. Now, go to our story today. The master... Could have, could have had an unforgiving attitude towards the servant. No, dude, you, you owe me this, this money. The, the agreement was that I, uh, I could call for it at any time. Now, cough it up, but look instead what he did in Matthew 18, 27. The servant's master took pity on him. He splunked his guts. Yeah, canceled the debt and let him go. Jesus knew something about us. Listen. He knew the moment that we emotionally invest into the life and circumstances and feelings of, other, of people around us and, and really feel what they feel down in our gut level that, we, that it will propel us away from justified anger and help our attitude towards patience. So after the waitress brings the wrong order the third time, 
you can uh, let the gates of ugly criticism start to fly and post on sp Facebook that no one should ever eat there again. Or, or you can splunk your guts and say, Honey, are you having a bad day? Is there anything that I can help you with? The next time your loved one uh, beats you to that bag of donuts and takes your favorite one, just plunk your guts and say, I hope you enjoyed it. Really. I really wanted you to have it anyway. And mean it. Yeah, you'll have to mean it. All right. Let's get personal. The next time someone gets under your skin and is about to spur you on to justified agitation, uh, but you know you should be patient instead, try this. Splunk your guts. Feel inside yourself what they are feeling. That doesn't make it right uh, what they are doing, but it keeps your response right. Now, let's just be real about this as we get ready to walk out of here this morning in your home and wherever you're going to go about. If you think you, all this is just baloney <laughs> uh, to let the minor stuff slip by, for you to splunk your guts for what the poor soul that is irritating you might be going through. Instead, you, you see every rational reason in the world to return anger and impatience. If that's the case, if that's you, let me remind you how the story ends. The servant demanded his fellow servant to pay him. He wasn't going to overlook the miner. He wasn't going to feel the plight of the fellow servant not being able to pay. And when Jesus has, at this time, Jesus has this mic drop. It's his signal for this. Listen up. Here's the lesson in Matthew 18, 35. This, this is how my heavenly Father will treat you unless you forgive your brother and or sister from your heart. So God will treat me the way I treat my son who gets a C minus. So God will treat me the way that I treat my boss who is always on my case. And so God will treat me the way I treat that loved one or friend that took my favorite donut. Major on the minors. Get that down. So that when the crisis comes, you will handle it. And then splunk your guts. Put yourself in the other person's shoes. Have some compassion. Have some, have some deep love for them, whoever that might be. And God will do the same for you. Take a deep breath, my friend, and be patient. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we uh, continue to study these virtues, that are on display in our lives, they come from your spirit that lives within us. And Lord, I, I pray that as we just re-examine each one of these that we're looking at in this series, that it will, that it will impart to us, it will uh, motivate us to realize that we're on display for you. And, and every one of these virtues, Lord, makes an impact not only on others, but it matters to you. And so, Lord, I, I thank you for these things. I pray that you'll just hear these prayers uh, this morning, that we um, be a people of patience. And, and we all struggle with that, Lord. There's a line that can be crossed, and when that line is crossed, help us to, help us to splunk. Help us to major on the minor, so that when the major crisis comes, we'll be, we'll be the one that shows peace and love and kindness. To others Lord if there's somebody here dealing with patience or impatience um, I, I, I pray that you give them strength to put this message into action and remember the the merciful unmerciful servant that wasn't merciful to his fellow servant but how you as Lord of the universe are so merciful to us who have faltered and let you down so many times. You had every right to be impatient with us. 
but you loved us. You showed us what you really felt about us by dying on the cross. And Lord, I'm just thankful for that again. Thankful for what you did for us. And I pray that we would do that for others. Thank you, Lord, for hearing these prayers this morning. Bless us as we continue. In Jesus' name, amen. Let the King of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. Let the King of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, he is my song. You are good. Worshiping with us this morning, and uh, God bless. Uh, got a couple of announcements that we want to share with you and remind you of. Uh, you know, if you were with someone today, uh, let be sure to let us know if you were able to to have invite a person or two or others in with you today to watch and and join us in worship. We hope that you've mentioned that on your uh, uh, chat page or on the side there of your of uh, the Facebook page. Um, also, we, we want to just uh, remind, remind us to, uh, hey, t I want to give a big shout out to veterans and people who have served our country. You know, t today, tomorrow, uh, this weekend, t take a moment to, to call somebody maybe and, and just thank them for, for what uh, time they gave uh, to defend our country or to, to serve our country. And so I want to I wanna just encourage you to do that once again. Um, I, and, and a couple other things. Uh, maybe you watched uh, Phil or J um, uh, Andy's uh, announcements this week. And, and I just want to remind us again of the four Ps that uh, Phil shared in, in his message about being patient. <laughs> we just talked about this again, how we, we need to be patient through uh, our future plans and, and where, how we get there and how long it takes to get there. Uh, believe me, we, we don't take this lightly and we're really thinking it through carefully. And so be patient, be positive, um, pursue um, the, the things that uh, are good and, and helping others, and then pray. Um, and pray for our leaders, pray, pray for our whole country. Um, pray for Midland. Uh, Midland, Michigan. Wow, what a traumatic and crisis thing that they're going through right now. So um, we, we want to encourage you to touch five again uh, throughout this week. Uh, make five contacts and um, uh, let us know. We are very interested still in you letting us know what your needs are 
if you have something that is uh, something beyond you or some way that we can help, uh, please, please notify us and, and let us know. Um, I want to uh, encourage you uh, tonight at 6 o'clock, uh, the Unpack class will be available. Go to the du Duplain, web or Duplain Facebook page and uh, you'll, you can just get on right there uh, and uh, it'll be a Zoom uh, meeting and uh, join us for that today at 10 o'clock and next week at 10 o'clock Lauren Windsor continues to have his uh, conference call lesson and you're welcome to join that uh, same thing you go to the Facebook page and you can find directions for that okay uh, I think that's about it um, just we, we want to encourage you to begin uh, bringing others into your home to worship together for the next few weeks, hopefully just a few weeks, and, and then we'll have a limited uh, startup back here at the church, hopefully. But that's just me talking, and uh, I can't promise that, but let, that's, uh, let's make that a prayer e uh, e event. Um, so um, let us know uh, who's with you and uh, how that's going, and uh, we'll... Uh, We'll be, there'll be an announcement, uh, some more announcements this week if something new is happening. So God bless. Uh, have a great uh, rest of the day, and I'm going to close with uh, one more prayer. Father, thank you for the beautiful day outside here in uh, mid-Michigan, and I pray that uh, you'll just uh, bless us as we uh, go throughout this day, this Lord's Day, and uh, help us to remember the things that we learned here in Matthew chapter 18 about the unmerciful servant and the need for patience in our own lives. And Father, that's going to be reflected in how you treat us. So I pray that, Lord, you'd help us to splunk our guts and just look for the other person, how we can reach out to them and, and kind of feel what they're going through and um, put ourselves in their shoes. Lord, thank you for these things. I pray that you will bless us as we just uh, go throughout this day. We love you. And uh, we want to honor you and, and uh, do all we still can do for you uh, as we go uh, through this week. And so we ask you to hear these prayers and bless us uh, today and throughout the week. In Jesus' name, amen.